Hello and welcome. We are the Management Monsters, and this is a pitch for our five-episode mini-series where we'll be introducing various management concepts for people already in the management field or prospective managers. To keep things relatable and easy to digest, we decided to use the popular children's movie, Monsters, Inc. The contributors for this project are Monica, Dominica, Christian, Atraf, Hunter, and Dahlia. Monsters, Inc. is known to generate power for the monster community, Monstropolis. The company uses power from human children's screams to receive electricity. However, the monsters are afraid of the children because they are seen as toxic. When a human enters the monster world, there is more problems created for Monsters, Inc. These problems lead to a new change in management in the company. Our target audience consists of managers and prospective managers. Our goal is to demonstrate the importance of the management concepts we will be discussing in a company's performance. The characters for our mini-series are Henry J. Waternoose, Randall Boggs, Mike Wazowski, Boo, and James P. Sullivan, otherwise known as Sully. The first character on our list is Henry J. Waternoose. In the beginning, Waternoose is portrayed as the shot caller and CEO of Monsters Incorporated, where a society of monsters aimed to capture little kids' screams for a source of power. Mr. Waternoose has capitalized on the strategic vision of capturing little kids' screams by organizing a cross-functional team of monsters that are routinely sent out to scare kids in return with their screams. Mr. Waternoose has established a point system, which is an example of a distributive justice, that creates a competition between the monsters to see who can capture the most screams. This reflects Mr. Waternoose's ability to manage strategically and influence other people to attain the organization's objectives by implementing goals established at the top of the company and making sure they are followed throughout other departments. Mr. Waternoose has insisted that one touch by a kid to a monster is enough to kill or do serious damage to the monsters themselves. This has established a culture by building fear among the monsters and sticking to company policies. Over time, it is clear that Mr. Waternoose is losing control over Monsters, Inc. because of the energy crisis they begin to face. Kids aren't as scared as they used to be, resulting in less screams being harvested. This begins to have a detrimental effect on Mr. Waternoose's reputation and propels him into the antagonistic fall-off as the CEO of Monsters, Inc. He then turns to increasing technology development by approving the use of the Scream Extractor which extracts screams from kids without ever actually scaring the kids. This highlights how desperate Mr. Waternoose has become with in regards to keeping his job as CEO of Monsters, Inc. Eventually, while working with Randall, Mr. Waternoose's shady tactics get exposed to the whole company. Mr. Waternoose is recorded saying, I'll kidnap a thousand children before I let this company die and is taken away by the Child Detection Agency. Next on our list is Randall Boggs. Randall is the second most successful scare in Monsters, Inc. behind Sullivan. He is portrayed as a sneaky and shady monster with a short temper. Randall's job is to enter children's rooms when they are sleeping and capture their screams as a source of power for Monsters, Inc. Randall was always bothered that he trailed Mike and Sullivan in scares. He set out a goal to become the company's top scare no matter what the circumstances. Despite Mr. Waternoose saying Sully is, quote, twice the scare Randall could ever be, end quote, Randall is able to convince Mr. Waternoose to let him kidnap a child and use his scream extractor to override Sullivan and take the position as top scarer. This ethical lapse is the start of the demise of Monsters, Inc. as we know it. Randall's ethnocentric view of of using the Scream Extractor highlights the ethical dilemma Randall has chosen. This choice has a profound impact on the organization as a whole and ultimately reshapes how Monsters, Inc. conducts business by focusing on children's laughs instead of screams. Our next character is Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski is a scaring assistant at Monsters, Inc. He is Sully's best friend and work partner. While Sully does the actual job of scaring children, Mike focuses on the technical part of the job. That includes collecting screams and keeping them on record. Although Mike has the potential to be more than just an assistant at the company, he recognizes his important role in Sully's career and is willing to sacrifice his own potential success for his friend. 
He is funny, sarcastic, smart, kind, and supportive. He used to be somewhat insecure during his college years, but he learned how to be confident with time. Now he's good at public speaking and problem solving. He is overall devoted to his profession and sticks to the company's motto, we scare because we care. The firm's strategic management plans are different than other industries because they are a monopoly, meaning that it is the only place that supplies energy for the whole city. Although they do not have to worry about competition, they are struggling to collect screams since kids are not easily scared anymore. Rather than any external problems, management needs to conduct an internal analysis and focus all of their efforts on keeping the company going. Unfortunately, top management sought out new, borderline criminal means by which to obtain screams in large quantities. Boo. And no, I wasn't trying to scare you. That's just the name of our next character. A two-year-old who is curious, naive, and adventurous. Sully and her develop a strong bond and later becomes attached to Mike, who decides to name her Boo. Eventually, she overcomes her fear of monsters, especially of Randall. Although she does not really speak, she quickly learns how to say Kitty, Boo, and Mike Wazowski. Mike and Sully realize that she is comfortable around monsters, laughs, and enjoys their company. Their interaction proves that kids are not a threat to monsters and can actually help generate electricity by laughing. Last but certainly not least is James P. Sullivan. Sully is an individual who built himself up to be the top scare in the company. Being at the top doesn't interfere with Sullivan's humility towards others. Sullivan is Mike's best friend and shares his success with him as he is his assistant. Sullivan focuses on being a great employee for the company and sees his success as a reward for his hard work. Sullivan does go by the name of Sully for many of his close friends. Sullivan is known to be confident, tenacious, tough, and intimidating. When Sullivan is given a task, he becomes determined to complete the task no matter the risk and consequence of such action. An example of this is seen in the film, When Sully Finds Boo. Even when faced with an easy alternative to get out of the situation, Sully found it immoral to give in. Sully put his career at risk to get Boo back to her rightful home. And now it's time to take a look into our five episode overview. The management themes we'll be discussing throughout the episodes are management and managers, the management environment, decision making and planning, managing change and innovation, and foundations of control. Episode 1, Managers and Management. This is where the viewer is introduced to the characters officially and their roles in the organization. Episode 2, The Management Environment The objective of Monsters, Inc. is to focus on collecting the children's screams from the human world. In order for the monsters to collect the screams, the company uses pole interdependence. This method allows monsters to be partners in two teams. One monster goes through a human world by door as the other one collects the screams. Therefore, all groups are collectively contributing by generating more human scream power. Also, there's a scare board that is shown as a distributive justice that keeps track of employees' work, supporting competition, and motivation at work. There are institutional forces that are involved in protecting the monster's safety while on job through the CDA. Episode 3, Decision-Making and Planning After exposing Boo to Mike at the restaurant, they are faced with one of the most challenging problems they've ever had. A human child is a monster's biggest fear, therefore, eliminating this threat became their top priority. When they realized the severity of the problem, Sullivan and Mike began to evaluate possible solutions. The problem of how they were going to get rid of Boo and put her back into the human world. Mike considered releasing her into the forest, using a slingshot, and even offered to set her out in a random bag to forget about. After they examined each possible way to solve their problem, they chose the alternative in which they would disguise Boo and take her down to Monster Zinc, where they would get her door and return her to the rightful place. They both were aware that the stakes were high on this situation, considering they could lose their current status at the company. Once their plan was executed, everything else fell into place successfully, returning Boo home. Episode 4 looks at change and innovation. 
Management changes happen when there are challenges in the company. A significant challenge that Water News faced was the decrease of children who were scared of monsters, and a big problem that the whole company faced. However, Water News thinks it's better to kidnap the human children and forcefully extract their screams from a machine. The machine is the solution to the problem that children are no longer as scared. This method was unethical and Water News is arrested by the CDA. Sullivan talks to Mike about returning Boo to the human world. They both become friends with Boo and they are comfortable with uncertainty avoidance of a human in the monster's world. Sullivan even discovers that Boo's laughter can create energy. Sullivan thinks laughter can generate more energy than screams, and this idea revolutionized Monsters, Inc. Episode 5, the final episode, focuses on foundations of control. Sullivan becomes the CEO of Monsters, Inc. He monitors his employees on the way they perform comedy. He keeps track of how well the company has progressed over the year, and as a result, his employees are happy and loving their jobs. By the end of our mini-series, we hope that the viewer will be able to answer the question of why is management important, and use these tactics in their everyday lives.